Good evening, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We are so delighted that you have decided to join us for this uh, very special candlelight service. Those at home as well, thank you for tuning in and joining us today. We've been celebrating Advent now for the last four weeks, and Advent is a great anticipation of the arrival of Christ. And we've been waiting and waiting. We've been celebrating and anticipating even arriving at this very evening. And so tonight, we want you to feel free in the Spirit of God. We want you to honor Christ, love Jesus. We want you to ponder the deeper things of God in this place, this very evening. And so we invite you. We invite you to stand and sing. We invite you to kneel and sing. We invite you to remain quiet and ponder and listen. We invite you to worship God with us as you desire. And anticipation has grown within our hearts to be at this place in this moment. And I've been praying hard for this moment. I've been waiting for this moment. I knew it would be different, but Christmas would be the same. The meaning would be the same. The celebration might look different. It might feel different. But Christmas is still the same. And so we invite you to celebrate in the anticipation and the arrival of His presence among us. For indeed, he is here among us. Pray with me, Heavenly Father, we invite you here. We invite you to be with the people that have tuned in. We invite you to be in the hearts and the minds of those that have gathered here to honor you and worship you. Would you dwell in our midst? We've long awaited your presence. We've long awaited this moment. And we celebrate you. We honor you. We glorify you your name, the name that is above all names, the holy name, the Emmanuel, the Messiah, the Yeshua, the Christ, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I invite you to worship with us, amen.
praise your name. Glory be to God. Father, I thank you. We worship you. We glorify you. Uh, Father, we see, we see what you're doing in the lives of your people, how they rejoice and how they sing, how they worship and how they praise, how they fall upon their knees, how they raise their hands. Father, we praise you and we glorify you. Father, bless us with your presence. We need you. Hear our hearts cry. Minister into our hearts. We rejoice. We praise you in the name of your Son. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Hey, check this out. I'll be reading from John 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. <clears throat> through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made. That has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. <clears throat> the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for light of the world. We pray for your hope, peace, joy, and love to shine all year long. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas and have a happy new year. Looking forward to seeing you once again in the new year. All right. Very good. Thank you, Bev. Appreciate that very, very much. It's been nice to be able to uh, have some people involved throughout the Advent season and being able to share some faces that we haven't quite been able to see. Uh, uh, so we're just glad to see your face and glad that you're able to participate with you. I cannot believe that it's Christmas Eve already. Long anticipated, long in getting here, but oh, what a year. Did it arrive too fast or not fast enough? Did it seem like long, arduous journey, but like it's already here now? 
Tonight, many have gathered here, so glad that you came out, so grateful. Many are watching on media. Thank you for being with us and tuning in, watching. Each of us has gathered probably for a lot for our own very own reasons. Some come for uh, because it's an obligation. Some show up and tune in because, well, you know, it's, it's Christmas, so that once a year time, I'm going to have to go to church and show I believe. And maybe twice a year, you'll come at Easter too. That'd be nice. Some feel obligated. Perhaps maybe, just, just maybe, you kind of gathered or you tuned in, just maybe because you believe that Christmas is more than just about gifts and presents, trees and wreaths. It's about the birth of Christ. So you want to honor him and you want to worship him. So you tune in or you gather up somewhere or you call family members and you send cards. Whatever reason that you're gathered up or thinking about, thinking about Christmas in a different way, I, I, pray that, I pray the Lord is tugging on your heart. I pray that you're not even really sure about why you do the things that you do or why you've come or why you've tuned in or not even sure what to expect in this kind of a Christmas season that's really different full of fear and confusion, and do I go or do I stay? Should I wear a mask? Don't I wear a mask? Do I rub my hand? How does this work? Just in the midst of all of that, I, I pray the Holy Spirit tugs on your heart, and touches you in a different way this year. For God, I know that it really doesn't matter why you've gathered. In so much as what's going to matter is how you carry this Christ that you hear about, that you learn about, that you celebrate, how you carry this Christ throughout the rest of the year. This is what God is concerned about. How does a child born 2,000 years ago change everything about your daily life? That's amazing. Our scripture reading in John, see, John doesn't really mess around. He, he doesn't mess around with a lot of details. He doesn't go about with angel visitations. He doesn't talk about the traveling from Nazareth to Bethlehem. There's, there's no manger scenes. There's no shepherds in the field. There's no magi traveling from afar. Instead, he gets right to the point. Here's your first slide. In the beginning was the word... In the beginning was the Word, and the, that's Jesus holding on tight, loving on the world. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made made. Here's your first one. Jesus is the Word. Not complicated, is it? People often will say to the preacher, hey, preacher, I hope you bring a good word today. Or preacher at the end of the service, you know, would stand and hug and shake hands. Those were the days. Good word today, preacher. Good word. Loves hearing your word today. See, the word has already come. What more can I do? What more can I add to what God has already done? I, I, I got no word for you. He is the word. I hope you receive the word tonight. I pray you receive the word tonight. See, we need the Christmas word. We need the, in the beginning was the word. We don't need a preacher's word. We need the word. And Jesus' the word is a very creative word. In order to even begin to understand the terminology about what John's writing concerning the word, you have to understand John's writing, and he's writing to Jews and to Greeks, to the Jews and to the Gentile. To the Greeks, it would be very philo philosophical, the word. 
They would understand that in the thoughts of, of, of philosophy and rational thought and, and principles of the universe and, and the mystical energies of God. They wouldn't understand the word in, in, in this way. Without a doubt, John is using the terminology in a concept that shows the Greeks a supreme force, the word. They would understand it this way. The Greeks, the Gentiles, in a, in a galaxy far, far away. They would understand it in this terminology. To the Jews, the word, they would understand it in an entirely different way. For them, it would be much more personal and much more directed at them, the Jew. To them, the vital importance of the phrase, the phrase would be, thus saith the Lord, or God said. So, therefore, the word of God would come. The word of God would be spoken through the prophets. And after all, when you refer to the word of God, they would be speaking only to the Jews because he is our God and we are his people. He wouldn't speak to those people. They would understand the word in an entirely different way. And John brings it together, kind of showing a new meaning, something bigger, something broader. From him, for him, John, the word, the word is not philosophy. It, it, it's, it's a living being. It's the source of all life. It, it, it's not a representation of or the voice of or any kind of prophetic utterance of God. The word is God changes everything about understanding the Word. The Word, the person. The person was divine. The Word, the Creator. The Word, the Almighty. The Word, the Omniscient. The Word, the source of all life. The Word, the beginning and the end. The Word became flesh. Make no mistake, when John uses the word, the word, he's talking about Jesus. When you use the term, the word, what are you talking about? Oftentimes we think of a, you know, get in the Bible. Got to get in the word. What you need to do is get in the word. I, wanted to, I want you to think about that in a different terminology this evening. Hear it in a different way. You need to get in the Word. You need to get in the Word. You need to get in the Word. Jesus is the Word. Word up. Get in Christ. You want to know God? Get to know His Word. Get in the Word. You want to experience a deeper walk with God? Get in the Word. Get to know the Word. See, you can't find a more spiritual experience than being in the Word, than being in Christ, than being in Jesus. We need to be in Jesus. We need to be in the Word. And the Word became flesh. We know this as Jesus. God wants to communicate with us and to us through His Word. Not the Greek terminology, not the Jewish terminology, the Creator, the Word. Jesus is the Word, born that you might know Him. In the beginning, the Word already existed before all creation before time ever even began, Jesus already existed. The Word already was. He always is, always was, and always will be. The Word came for a visit. He came in a way that was out of this world. He talks in a way that's out of this wor world. Behold, all things have become new. He would leave eternity, step out of the heavens, and pave a new way. 
He had to do it. He built and bridges a gap between spiritual and physical. This is Jesus doing something miraculous and mysterious, magical. Born unto us, a son. And he had to do it. See, here's this great God of the universe coming to earth to dwell among his creation. And who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to even be used to his own advantage. Rather, Jesus made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, Merry Christmas, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. He even humbled himself to the point of being obedient to death, experiencing death. Death even upon a cross. That was a sacrificial love. That's a sacrificial word. Born to die that you might live. It's going to be a great Christmas if you get in the word. Here's your next portion of scripture. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world... And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but they did not receive him. Here's your next one. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light. Light has come into the world. And it's a celebration of God's enormous love for us. Get into the Word. Walk in the light. Did anybody else see the Christmas star? Was it just a few days ago? We were all calling it a Christmas star, but it had nothing to do with the star. It was really planets that were aligning, right? Usually the brightest stars in the sky are not stars. They're planets, right? And so did anybody see that? Anybody actually go out and look southwest and view it up and try to get a, you know, get a picture? We looked through binoculars and went, oh, they're not even together yet. Just waiting for, for the alignment to come. That should say Jesus is the light. Did I write it too big? He, he's, he, he's so bright you can't see him. That's what that is. <laughs> Jesus is the light. <laughs> when things come together, that's an alignment, right? When things get into alignment, they're brighter. They're brighter. I love it when a plan comes together. We were waiting, waiting, oh, 800 years for that, something to happen so that we can look at that and go, wow, that was bright. Jesus came into the world. All things came into alignment. I love it when a plan comes together. God's plan was coming together. Much of the world would not even come into alignment with him. Much of the world would not even recognize it. Much of the world would not even honor it. They would choose darkness over the light. Which will you choose? Will you follow the ways of the world, or will you choose to celebrate Christmas? Listen, will you choose to celebrate Christmas? Not the holiday, not the winter break festival. Will you celebrate Christmas? Will you celebrate Jesus, the light, of the world. Those of us that would turn our hearts over to Christ, we will not walk in the darkness anymore. We've been set free. Can I get an amen on that one? See, we walk in the presence of the Lord. We walk in the Word. We walk with the Word in our hearts, and we shine with the light of Christ. 
hide. There's nothing to hide. All our sins have been washed away. Shame is gone. Guilt is gone. Condemnation is gone. Reassurance fills our souls. Peace thrives within us. Joy flourishes. Hope is here and hope is present and love abounds. Can I get a praise the Lord? See, and as we walk out of here this evening, back out into the world, we need to continue to walk in the Word and walk in the light of Christ. We need to make certain that our association is with Him, not with the world. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we will have fellowship with one another. We can walk and encourage one another. And there are many deceptions in the world. There are many false ways and many traps and snares to fall into. There's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of fear. Many lies will be believed. Many will fall victim. Scripture tells us that he came into the world. And the world would not accept him. Will you accept him? Will you accept him tonight? Will you step into the light? Will you believe in the word? You come out of the darkness. You get into the word and out of the world. You get into the light and out of the dark. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie. And we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we will have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. John writes that everything was created through him. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The putting it in that way refers to the fact that the Father and Jesus were there in creation. Nothing was created. Nothing was made that has been made or has been created without him. This is the divinity of Christ. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. And why does that even matter? Who created what and who did what and where it came from and Jesus said this and we're doing that and he did that. Why is that even significant? It's significant in the fact that the creator has to redeem his own creation. The redeemer has to redeem his own creation, right? The creator. See, a prophet couldn't do it. A priest can't do it. A preacher couldn't do it. It took God himself to do it. His very own creation, he had to redeem. Only God himself could redeem the creation. There would be no wise men, no teacher that could. He himself God must come and do the work himself. Emmanuel, God with us. Merry Christmas. Here comes Jesus. And we celebrate. See, folks, Jesus is my Savior. He's not my religion. Jesus is my Savior. He's not my philosophy. Is he your savior? This baby born in a manger, born to take upon the sins of the world, born to dwell with man, born to know man, born in the flesh, 
Glory, hallelujah, this is why we sing. Glory, hallelujah, this is why we celebrate. Glory, hallelujah, this is why we light some candles. Glory, hallelujah, this is why we string up lights around a Christmas tree. Glory, hallelujah, this is why we put up lights around a window. Glory, hallelujah, this is why we put up wreaths on the door. Glory, hallelujah, this is why we shout. Glory, hallelujah, God came to redeem you, his very own creation. No man could do it. It took God himself. This is a celebration of your very own lives. This is a celebration of your very own eternal life. God has not abandoned you. He has not forgotten you. He has not cast you into the pit. He has made a way that you might be redeemed, that you might be saved. The word became flesh. This is the light. This is the illumination. This is the revelation. You've been blessed to understand. You've been blessed to know. Are the lights on? Are the lights on? Is anybody home? The lights are on, but nobody's home. Jesus, the light of the world. Man, I love it when a plan comes together. God put a great plan together. And watch, here's your next passage. To all who would receive him, to those who believed in his name. Anybody believe in his name in here? Amen. He gave the right to become children of God. Children, uh, like this, watch. Born not of natural descent. Born not of a human decision. Born not of a husband's will, but born of God. Born of God. You're born of God. See, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. We get the privilege of being born of God. You call it whatever you want. Born again. Regenerated. Restored. Renewed. Revived. I don't care. You call it whatever you want. Jesus came that you might understand what it is to be born of God. Because Jesus was born, we get a fresh start. Because Jesus was born, we are dead to our sins and alive in Christ. Because we, Jesus was born, we have the promise of eternal life. Because Jesus was born, we are the children of God. This little child, born in Bethlehem, would grow up and he would make a statement. I hope you can catch it. And I hope you can understand it. He would make a statement that says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes unto the Father except through me. See, listen carefully. We just read about the word, the light. And Jesus is the way. He was there at the beginning of all creation. All things were made by him, through him, and for him. Understand? When Jesus makes a statement and says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, no one comes unto the Father except through me. He's not making a religious statement. He's making a creation statement. All things shall revert back to Christ. Understand? See, we try to make Jesus and put him in the and put him in a you know, well, he, he's he's just one of many ways like the Buddha. He, he's just one of many ways like Muhammad. He's just one of many ways like all the gods in India and the sacred cow. He's just one of many ways. No, 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 no. He's the creator of all things. And he would say, no one comes unto the Father except through me. Why is that? I created all things. He all, we all, in the midst of reconstruction, in the midst of a new heaven and a new earth, 
in the midst of a reassignment from out of this body, in the midst of death, in the midst of resurrection, all things through Christ. That's it. That's it. It's always been about Him. It's always been for Him. And all things will be through Him. Even from the beginning. Even in the end. No man comes unto the Father except through me. This is so profound. And maybe it's a little too deep for Christmas festivities. Yet the Lord has been very clear to me, particularly over these last few weeks. Christmas is a supernatural event. It's spiritual in nature. And this Christmas, it's not different. It's not different. You celebrate it different. Maybe you hubble in your houses differently. You send presents differently. You shop differently. Christmas is not different. It's the same Christmas from 2,000 years ago. We've been celebrating Christmas under all kinds of circumstances for 2,000 years. I promise you, Christmas is the same. And it's a supernatural event. And Christmas is for those who believe in His divinity. For those that believe in His divinity. Everyone else, celebrate a winter break. Everybody else, you can have a winter festival. Everyone else, happy holidays. As far as me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. Merry Christmas. Because it's about Jesus Christ. And if you're ready to celebrate that the Word became flesh, if you're ready to celebrate that the light has come into the world, if you're ready to celebrate and declare that Jesus is the way, then you're ready to declare that the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. There's your last passage. The Word became flesh made his dwelling among us. If you're ready, you say that, you believe that, you walk that word, live in that light, and follow his way, I promise you, you're going to have a very merry Christmas. Let me pray with you. Father, in this place, even those at home, we gather here just to honor you and worship you. Father, there are some that need a Merry Christmas. And I don't mean they need presents with bows, presents with, under a tree. I mean they need your presence. They need your presence in their lives. And Father, it is easy to get focused on this world to get lost in the shuffle of fear. To get swept up in the confusion about, it's really all about the children, isn't it? It's easy to get sidetracked. And Father, I would pray that this Christmas would be about Christ. That we would understand the reasons why we celebrate. That the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. May we just... Repeat that in our hearts and in our minds. And Father, for that one that needs a Merry Christmas, may your presence fall afresh upon them. And Father, for those that need a revival, a revitalization, a refocus, Father, may they receive a great presence of you. Father, this very evening, we praise you and honor you and glorify you. We thank you for your presence in this place. We humble ourselves and declare that you are our God. We believe in you. We come before you in the name above all names, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So, we're going to try to do a little candle lighting. And this will take all of you singing as best that you can. And here's how we do this. Very important. I will light a candle off the Christ candle, the light of the world. Okay? Now, 
when a candle is lit, the lit candle stays up, right? The lit candle, so the flame burns up. Keep your candle like this. The one that's to be lit gets to do this. And then touches, and now that one's like, got it? That's how we do it, okay? All right. Would you stand with me, please? We'll work on lowering some lights as best that we can. I'll light off the Christ candle.
honor you, Lord. We glorify you and we worship you. May the light of the world dwell within our hearts throughout the coming year. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Gently. <laughs> Gently. Very good. And so, Feliz Navidad. Come on now. Feliz Navidad. Yeah. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero on you y felicidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero on you y felicidad. I'm gonna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas From the bottom of my heart I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas From the bottom of my heart Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad, prospero on you y felicidad. Ah, Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad, prospero on you y felicidad. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom. Of my heart I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas From the bottom of my heart Woo! Merry Christmas, everybody.